from Big Mama's Coffee and Espresso Bar, please welcome Lyle Foster. And from Q in Oteca, please welcome Larnell Foster. Think big if you're going to think at all. How we think in so many ways, I'm convinced, has everything to do with what we are able to achieve. Perhaps I'm also convinced that the process of our thinking does not just start with today's seminar, but some of the seeds and the foundation, if you will, for that process started from the beginning, your beginning, that is. I'm in a season of my life when I can look back and think about formative moments, seasons, experiences, and realize that what I did with them had a lot to do with how I have made it, how I survived, and of course, how I think. For some reason, I still remember this, but growing up when I did, in rural Virginia, there are a lot of experiences that today would seem fairly surprising. A few of those, however, still stand out. My mother had decided that my brother, my only sibling, and I would be part of two families that would desegregate the schools of our county when the laws changed. All of my neighborhood friends had advised me strongly not to go, don't go, don't go. And they had told me of the horrible things that could happen to me. It was nerve wracking to be part of the pioneer group, but I went. In the fourth grade, the first report cards had been distributed. And the boy behind me, I still remember his name, oddly, his name was Cleveland. And I still can almost picture his face. And in that exact moment, I didn't think anything of his request. But he asked if he could see my report card. And I passed it to him. And loudly, he exclaimed to the class, This nigga got all A's. <laughs> and in one of those moments that are not scripted, a line of my fellow classmates quickly formed to the much befuddled teacher's surprise. And they literally wanted to see for themselves that someone whose skin color was like mine could think and be a scholar, unlike what they had been told. I learned in that moment that I would have to think big, try hard to be more than what someone else thought about me and of me. Fast forward, and yes, of course, a lot happened in the years in between. It came time to go to college, and the school I wanted to go at the tender age of 16 was far away in the land of 10,000 lakes. And yes, my friends, my families, the haters, and the imitators all said with one united voice, why would you ever want to move to Minnesota? <laughs> well, I can halfway understand that. It's true. It was a long way away and a completely different climate, and I had never, ever been to Minnesota or even to that college to visit and see what it looked like. But it was an incredible and formative experience. And again, it taught me to think past and beyond my beginnings and to realize that many may mean well, but it was not always the best decision for me. And it enlarged my tent it expanded my territory, and it taught me a different way to think. We will continue to fast forward. I came to a city named Springfield a bit more than a decade ago and fell in love with a street named Commercial and its amazing architectural character. I simply had the idea that something was going to happen and I wanted to be a part of it. When I shared the idea with my brother and business partner, Henry, who actually happens to be here today from Indianapolis, and his son, my nephew Justin, who actually works on Commercial Street with us, I think he thought I had been on some hallucinogens. <laughs> but excitedly, I plodded along. And I remember coming up with the idea for using the first, place, first floor space, rather, of this building for a coffee shop. Now, of course, I haven't shared with you yet that the building was condemned, and there was no back wall on all three floors. But I thought, well, 
At least I immerse myself in preparing and putting up signage. Coming soon, specialty coffee, great espresso, homemade desserts and gourmet sandwiches. And we had been open for a while, and then <laughs> some of the reality hit me. I learned what the neighbors and even fellow business owners have been saying. Give him 30 days, he'll be out of business. I'm glad I haven't seen the emails or read any of the text. The messages never got to me, fortunately. And yes, it's true. The color of my skin did come into the equation on many an occasion. I remember hearing things like this many you, different times. Are you the cook? Do you guys have barbecue? <laughs> the good news is, I was thinking about what C Street could be, the big idea, and hoping to be a part of it. So sometimes I said, yes, I am. And sometimes I said, no, I'm not. But I always said, nope, we don't do barbecue. We do just great coffee and gourmet sandwiches. But for me, it was always thinking of an idea that was bigger than me and seeing the vision come to pass. The decision to go to graduate school in Alabama was probably one of the first times I remember that I really had to think big. Most of my friends were moving to NYC or LA, and all they would say to me was, why would you want to move to Alabama? <laughs> to me, the decision made perfect sense, and I wasn't hesitant. It was an opportunity to grow, to be in a place where people didn't think the way I did. It would be an experience where I could begin the process of taking the time to listen to another person's perspective and realize that although I might not agree with them, there may be good reason for their thinking and even a possibility for understanding. Upon leaving Alabama, it was time to move to NYC. All that had been learned now needed to be applied. New York City is tough. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank you. It became clear very quickly that the odds are stacked against a person if they're not a native New Yorker, constantly being told what you won't be able to do. If you want to be at one of the top agencies, it's going to take you at least two years. Or no years at all. The belief in the thought process and the homework were what counted. Thinking small, yes, it will take two years. Thinking big, one gets the job that they deserve and off to LA. You know they say people don't last six months out there in that fancy Los Angeles. <laughs> well, six months can turn into whatever you think it can. LA is a difficult place, but it's also a place full of talent. And if you think big enough, there's nothing a person can't do. Writers, directors, producers, gamers, actors, singers, dreams. It sounds a little happy-go-lucky. But what is the alternative? Never even trying? Never exploring? Never failing? I don't think it would be fair of me to talk about thinking big if I don't speak about one of the hardest things I had to work through in my life. There are many things that we all grew up believing. I had a very clear understanding of who I was, and there was no way that anyone was going to change that. There were people I saw on TV or that walked down the street, and sometimes that I even met, and I passed huge judgment on them for their lifestyle. How could they be so shameless? How could they not be just like me? How could they not be just like my friends? Couldn't they just fit in the normal box so that I could too? Wouldn't they please think small like I did? I started to open my eyes after Columbine. How could people feel so dismissed and misunderstood? Where did the communication stop? So many questions. It became clear to me pretty quickly that my thought process needed to change. No one deserved my judgment. No one was less than. I began the process of opening up my mind and my heart. And by doing so, I learned to accept some things about myself that I didn't want to deal with. I could have continued in a life that was comfortable but small. Instead, a whole new world was given to me by being myself and thinking big. I'll talk about Springfield later. A few thoughts, 
few comments, a few reflections on thinking big. The challenges that started long ago have also been the beginnings of our opportunities. I invite you to think about some of the hardest moments in your life, some of the biggest disappointments, some of the things that you thought with all of your heart were going to work a certain way, and in fact, they collapsed in front of your very eyes. But if you're able to just learn the nugget or learn something from them, then today you can appreciate that those were opportunities for how to think big. So that little fourth grader named Cleveland, hey brother, thank you. You helped me to think a little bit bigger. When they asked, and I love cooks, but when they asked that I have barbecue, hey, thank you for the question. It helped me to think a little bit bigger. <laughs> Couple of thoughts. What stops you, what I call the big stealers? What are the big stealers in your life? Those reasons, those excuses for why we can't. Like Larnell, I never saw Springfield, Missouri on the radar. But like Jeff Houghton, make something where you are. The big helpers, what are the things that help you become who you are? What are the things that have made you the way you are? The people, the places, the things that push you forward, that nourish you, that inspire you, that keep you going. If you know what those things are in your life, well, I invite you today to get a second helping. Double up on those things. If you don't know what those things are, then I invite you to dig deeper into the toy box and find them because we need those things to think big. What are the big, what I call keepers? What are those things that sustain you? Big ideas, big thoughts, big vision, it must be maintained. Do the things, but have the assistance you need to keep those balloons afloat. Sometimes it's lonely when you think big because not everybody wants to think with you. Couple of additional questions. If we could do it again, which means you, would you do it smaller or would you do it bigger? If we could do it again, would you do it worse or would you do it better? If we could do it again, would you do it the same or would you do it different? I've learned there's some things I would do different, but next time around, I'll make those notes to myself. It may be good to ask yourself those questions and ask them often. Keep thinking big? Well, do it big for the right reasons. What are the motivations for what you want to do? What are the reasons that you want your success? Why do you think big? Whose benefit is it for? Remember community. My background in Chicago had been in community development. In fact, working with some of the most challenged families and individuals in Cook County, Illinois. But that background also helped me to appreciate that we must invest in our communities. In those early years of being on Commercial Street, if I was just looking at the balance sheet, and I'm embarrassed sometimes to say that in business folks' company, but if I was just looking at the profit and loss statements, man, we would have packed up. Honey, lady, we would have packed up and closed up the shop long ago, but there were jobs at stake, there was vision at stake, there was potential, there was possibility, there was community at stake. There were so many folks in those early years that were just so glad somebody wanted to invest on that street and open up a business that was open every single day. Remember community, remember others. Be inclusive. The world is changing. The first majority non-white birth cohort was born three years ago. And those demographic projections are not going to change. And so our customers, our communities, our neighbors, our friends, our environment is continually going to change. How do we make sure that we're inclusive of all of that? Be big enough to help. Help somebody each day. And I think I've heard that theme a little bit throughout the day. Be big enough to be humble. I've heard that word today as well. Be big enough to make the world a better place. Sometimes I'm glad I'm at the station I'm in in life because the world is getting a little bit scary. But I also believe that the answer to our future lies within this room as each of us dares to think big.
Don't wait for someone else to complete you. Jerry Maguire was just a movie. Live from the heart of yourself. Your life is speaking to you. What does it say? Nobody but you is responsible for your life. You are responsible for your life. What is your life? What is all life? What is every flower, every rock, every tree? Energy. And you're responsible for the energy you create for yourself. And you're responsible for the energy that you bring to others. There is a difference between thinking you deserve to be happy and knowing that you are worthy of being happy. Your being alive makes worthiness your birthright. You alone are enough. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history, shame I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. And to a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. My Angela. If you had told me that I would be standing in the spot in Springfield, Missouri three years ago, I would have told you that you need to seek the guidance of a mental health professional. <laughs> and why is that? Because I wasn't thinking big. I was thinking about how comfortable my life seemed. Palm trees, 75 and sunny, movie stars all around. But the reality was, I wasn't that happy, I wasn't being challenged, and I wasn't a movie star, nor did I want to be. Thinking small for me was believing that an image makes the person. But what if the person doesn't need the image because they are living in their full truth? And what if the truth makes you happy? And what if being happy really comes down to thinking big? I don't have all the answers. I never will. But I know that we all have dreams. Why not try for at least one of them? We might as well think big. Why should any thought be small? We might as well think big if we're going to think at all. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on a walking, keep on a talking, doing the things I do. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on a walking, keep on talking. Heading up to Springfield Way. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, working for a better day. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn 
me around, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on talking, heading up to Springfield way.